on accident. <laughs> well, I, that is certainly a goal. Well, so I'm Kestrel Montez. So I'm Kestrel Montez, and I am owner of Ink Me This and LearnCalligraphy.com and Nibtique. And so all three are involved in the calligraphy community, but very different aspects. So Ink Me This is mostly products for calligraphers, and then LearnCalligraphy.com is classes calligraphy and engraving classes. And then Nibtique is a platform for calligraphers to list their services and put themselves out in front of clients to be hired. Um, so I actually was 40 when I started calligraphy, or almost, not quite, maybe. Uh, we, my husband and I, started a laser engraving business. So we would make uh, personalized gifts and mostly. And a lot of uh, that involved setting up graphics and um, font combinations on the computer that would then be used for with the laser engraver. And I just found that I loved computer fonts. I loved script fonts. I loved the fonts that had alternate ligature substitutions and different characters. Um, and I especially was drawn to the fonts that were hand uh, made using hand drawn scripts. So it led me to wanting to learn how to make a computer font. Uh, so I purchased the software to, and started trying to teach myself how to program a computer font that can be installed, you know, like the OTF files and TTF files, um, which was a bit of a challenge. Took me a while to figure that out. Uh, and then I was like, well, if I want to make a, a font with calligraphy, I need to learn calligraphy. So that was what pushed me to learn calligraphy um, and made me want to learn to, um, to write the letters that then I could scan and digitize to create a computer font. So I've done some of that, but then I kind of set the font making aside and have mostly focused on the calligraphy side now. On accident. <laughs> Um, I worked in public education before. I was a high school teacher and then um, worked in management. And I uh, was at one time doing some consulting work in education uh, for schools that were not meeting the requirements of the state testing levels. And so that was like a little side job that I had on top of my regular job. And it was nice to have that extra income. But after two years of it, I was I was tired of the travel that it required. So Francisco, my husband, uh, had a laser engraver in the garage. Again, this all started with laser engraving. And then through a wiggly path, we started the calligraphy. Um, but quite by accident, because we first started um, a business thinking it was just going to be a little side thing, bring in a little bit of extra income to replace that uh, consulting job that I had. That was that felt like a lofty goal. We didn't even know if that was going to be possible. But lo and behold, within a few months we were getting so much um, work that we were so busy, we started to have to think about reducing our time at our real jobs to be able to keep up. Sorry? When was that? When was that? That was in 2013 that we started 
that we started any of this on the, and again, we started it as a side, little side thing just for a little bit of extra money. We didn't even know if that was going to be possible. And we really were shocked by the response. Um, I don't have any kind of background in marketing or sales. You know, I majored in Spanish and math and then was a teacher. But I guess it turned out I kind of had a knack for the marketing. Uh, so before we knew it, we were getting so much work that um, it just grew on its own with and the ball kept rolling and one thing leads to another and you have to decide if you are going to keep working at the day job or do the new job. So we didn't intend to be business owners. It really happened to us. I feel very fortunate. So when it comes to the products that we've developed and that we make and sell or have made for us um, for Ink Me This, it's all come out of a personal need of my own, of mine. You know, I'm, I, I'm trying to make something work. I feel like it would be easier for me if I had X, Y, Z. Um, and so I start looking for something to buy myself. And if I can't find what I'm looking for, or I can't find one that I like, then I start looking into, well, what would it take to make it myself? And I've always just approached it from the standpoint of if, if I would need it and I feel like it would help me, then I'm probably not the only one. So why don't I make it and then just put it out there to see if it would help anybody else. So everything that we've done has stemmed from that thought process of having a problem or a need to solve and then creating something to fill that gap. So product development is very different from what most calligraphers do as a business, right? Most calligraphers um, focus on services, which I also offer my, my calligraphy services. So that's a whole different world. And um, for that, we develop Niptique to try to help other people get themselves out there to offer their calligraphy services. Because again, just seeing a gap in what was available, struggling myself to find a way to put my services out there to clients. Um, I've been listed on other platforms for a very long time and got no, no interest, no response from them. And I feel like a lot of it um, stemmed from that other platforms that have existed for a long time, such as The Knot and Wedding Wire and um, Hundred Layer Cake. There's, there's a bunch of them, but they focus on the wedding industry only, which we do a lot more than just weddings as calligraphers, right? Um, they're very geographically focused. So if you sign up for one of those sites, you have to pick one city and you'll only be seen by clients in that city or who filter for that city. But most of my work has actually come from people in other cities than myself. So they wouldn't see me if I only listed myself in my own city. And, um, and thirdly, they're extremely expensive. So um, hundreds of dollars every month to be shown in one city. And so our goal, again, seeing that problem, um, we've been work, we, it took us three years to develop the platform that would be built in a way that would be helpful to the calligraphy community. Allow clients from all over the world to see us because I can, I can do work for a client anywhere and ship it, or a lot of work that we do ends up being digitized. 
like an invitation design or a logo design. Um, I, it's done digitally, and so the files can be provided via email. Um, and then wanting it to be much more cost effective and wanting it to not focus on only wedding and invitation work that we do, but allow calligraphers who do murals, window painting, logo design, um, monograms, certificates, you name it, right? Well, there's so many things that we do, giving a platform where you can designate what you do and show your work. Well, I, that is certainly a goal of I Am Path is to spread awareness and, and educate people. So, and I think that I um, hope that through social media, we're achieving that better now. We, uh, I was asked to take over the Instagram account three years ago and have um, really tried to get I Am Path in front of more of the global community to raise that awareness of the resources that are available for classic hands. Um, and as you know, IAmPath.com has so many resources that are just absolutely um, invaluable. I do think that we should um, give a, a, a nod to all that modern brush lettering that you see on pillows at Target and and you know t-shirts online because I think that in this last, I don't know, 10, 15 years that that became really popular to see in the stores. It, it just brought calligraphy, even though it's not the same kind of calligraphy, it really brought calligraphy into the uh, spotlight for a lot of people that didn't know any of it existed. And so I, I think that it's pretty uh, common now for people to first discover modern calligraphy through social media or through the products that they're seeing in the stores and they look, like the way that it looks. Um, and a lot of it, like you mentioned, is brush lettering. So they stumble upon that first and maybe discover and that they love that. And then it leads them eventually to discovering the classic hands. So if we, if we might uh, dub it like the gateway, <laughs> the gateway to calligraphy. Um, I think that we should give modern brush lettering, you know, credit and a, a little nod of thank you to that. Uh, and, and then a lot of, and then try to hope and encourage and, and that people do discover that it's such a bigger world than just those. It was such a hard choice. So many beautiful submissions, but I'm just gonna pick this one. Again, so difficult. Um, the things that stood out to me in this piece, the script is really well executed. You can tell that there's um, good control of the nib. You see the transitions from swell to hairline are, are smooth and controlled. The flourishing is not just beautiful, but it's balanced around the piece. And the color choice is very complimentary and doesn't distract from from the words. So the words and the designs work nicely together without one overpowering the other. So I think that was very nicely done. I don't have to try to sound educated and cohesive. <laughs>